What's up, everybody? JT Sports and back to you guys with another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Atlanta Falcons impact players for the 2019 NFL season. And the first player that I have on this list is quarterback Matt Ryan. Now, Matt Ryan had a very solid season last year. Actually, a very great season, actually. 4,924 passing yards, 35 touchdowns, and then seven interceptions, and completed 69.4% of his passes. Now, a big reason why the Atlanta Falcons didn't make the playoffs last year was because the offensive line wasn't very good. And it's impressive to see the season that Matt Ryan had, considering how lackluster the offense it was. But now he has a very improved offensive line going into the 2019 NFL season. He also is getting Devontae Freeman back, so that's going to be another addition. And Matt Ryan, I think he's going to keep up the the productivity. He's one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL, so we expect him to have these kind of seasons. And 2019 will be no different. Next up, we have wide receiver Julio Jones, who is arguably one of the best wide receiver, who is arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL. Some people will say Antonio Brown. Some people will say Julio. I say Antonio Brown, but Julio Jones last season. 1,677 receiving yards, 113 receptions, and eight touchdowns. So he had those eight touchdowns after week 10 because I believe for the first 10 weeks he had no touchdowns. I don't know what it was, but he just wasn't scoring any touchdowns. They just couldn't find a way to get him the ball in the red zone and stuff like that. But end up in the season out on eight touchdowns and expect Julio Jones to have another great season. Matt Ryan, he's now going to be better now that he has a solid offensive line. Julio Jones now benefits from having Calvin Ridley on the roster because now Calvin Ridley is actually that good. Now he's not going to be the one receiving all the double teams and stuff like that. Naturally, I think Calvin Ridley is going to be so good that he's going to end up getting double teams sometimes. So it's going to be pick your poison with how good the Atlanta Falcons wide receiving core is. Julio Jones, for the most part, he's unstoppable. This guy's a monster. He's big. He's fast. Just no way of stopping this dude. And I expect this guy to keep up with the production. I think he probably has over 1,500 receiving yards, 100 and over 100 receptions, and probably about seven or six touchdowns this year. And he'll probably be a pro bowler in the All-Pro as well if he's able to stay healthy. Next up, we have wide receiver Calvin Ridley, who is going into his second season. 821 receiving yards, 64 receptions, and 10 touchdowns. Calvin Ridley was lighting the league up on fire, man. I mean, this guy came out guns blazing. It took him a while, but once this guy started going, he started going. So he's going to have a pretty big season in 2019. And I think it's because of how effective he was as a rookie once he finally got involved in the offense, once Matt Ryan and him started gaining more trust between each other. And it was just something very beautiful to see, man. This guy was very, very impressive, had some big games. So I'm expecting a big year out of him in 2019. I believe he's probably going to have over 1,000 receiving yards, probably 70 or 80 receptions. And I don't know if he'll have 10 touchdowns, but I believe he'll probably have about eight. Next up, we have tight end Austin Hooper, who is a very underrated piece of this Atlanta Falcons offense who doesn't really get talked about a lot. A lot of people talk about Julio Jones, Devontae Freeman, Matt Ryan, now Calvin Ridley, but Austin Hooper, this guy's so underrated that I didn't even know this guy made the Pro Bowl until after I was researching this video. I had 660 receiving yards, 71 receptions, four touchdowns, very, very underrated and quietly very good tight end in the NFL. One of the better tight ends in the NFL that nobody really talks about. So he's going to be in for another solid season in 2019 as well. Next up, we have halfback Devontae Freeman. He suffered a groin injury after two games. It was speculation that he could return in December, but basically the Atlanta Falcons, once their playoff hopes were diminished, it was basically no reason of having him come back. But when he does come back, he is very hard to bring down. He constantly gets you a lot of yards after contact. So him and Edel Smith, man, they're going to be a very good tandem. Tevin Coleman, he left the free agency. So... I still think the Atlanta Falcons have a very good running back tandem. Ido Smith, he has some very solid games as well. Devontae Freeman, very good running back. Very good getting those yards after contact. And I expect him to have a very productive year in 2019 after coming off that season when he basically missed every single game besides two. 
And coming off that groin injury, man, is he going to be the same player? I believe he will be, and I believe he will have over a thousand yards. He's going to be a pro bowler as well. So that's my expectations for him going into 2019. Next up, we have defensive end Vic Beasley, man. And this guy, a few seasons ago, had 15 and a half sacks, defensive candidate for defensive player of the year, and dipped. Haven't heard from this guy ever since. His rookie season, he had four sacks. Aside from that season when he had 15 and a half sacks, hasn't heard nothing from him again. Five sacks every single season since that. But head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, Dan Quinn, said that's going to change because after this offseason, Vic Beasley is even is either going to hate him or he's going to love him, man. So the Atlanta Falcons are trying to get Vic Beasley back to that 15 and a half sack form. Don't know where in God's name he disappeared at. But, I mean, this guy needs to come back, man, because this Atlanta Falcons defense, they really needed him last season with all the injuries they suffered. Um, He needs to go back to being that difference maker. He had 20 tackles, five sacks, and three pass deflections. So he needs to get back to that 15 and a half sack guy, man, because this guy is a very shell of himself, man. We talk about rappers that are one-hit runders. Vic Beasley might have been a one-hit wonder with that one good season that he had a few years ago. So hopefully he can get it back on track. I believe he will. Don't think he's going to have 10 sacks, but I believe he'll probably have nine or eight and a half, which is pretty solid for a guy who's looking to really get his foot back into what he, re he really has a show himself, man. I don't know how to explain it. This guy had 15 and a half sacks and dipped. So hopefully he can get back to at least about 7% of what he was a few seasons ago. I believe he will do that. I believe he'll have eight, nine sacks. So next up, we have defense tackle Grady Jarrett. Grady Jarrett, very balanced defense tackle. He can stop the run. He can also rush the quarterback as well. At 52 tackles, six sacks, and three forced fumbles. Very good defense tackle. This season, I think he'll, I think he's a guy who can actually bump up the productivity. I don't think he's a single sack guy. I think he's more capable of getting in the double digits. So I wouldn't be surprised this guy is, ends up having 10 sacks. And if he ends up having 10 sacks, then he most likely will be in the Pro Bowl. I think he's that kind of a player who's able to get 10 sacks. I don't think he's a single sack guy. I think he's more capable of more. And I think he will have at least 10 sacks this year. Next up, we have linebacker Deion Jones. Now, Deion Jones was another Atlanta Falcons player who also suffered an injury bug. He missed six games. He ended up coming back late in the season, I believe. He had 53 tackles, two interceptions, and six pass deflections. I expect him to be back in full form. Um, he's one of the better linebackers in the NFL. Very fast. Very, very, very good in coverage. One of the better coverage linebackers in all of the NFL um, Deion Jones, man, he's a very big piece of this Atlanta Falcons defense. And without him, they really, really struggled, man. And that's not the only former Pro Bowl who they had on that team as well. Keanu Neal, he missed the whole entire season as well. And whenever you miss two of your best players, your defense or your whole entire team, they're going to have a hard time replacing those guys because it's hard to replace good guys like Deion Jones and Keon Neal, who are some of the best players at their positions. So Deion Jones, I expect him to make it to the Pro Bowl this year hoping that he backs he bounces back from that injury riddle season that he had last year and I believe he will do so and I expect him to be in the Pro Bowl next year or this season next up we have safety Keanu Neal Keanu Neal he tore his ACL and the week one opener that's pretty much all we saw from him um Keanu Neal man was on the verge of becoming a very very solid safety or on his way to becoming an elite safety Towards ACL, and that left a big hole in that Atlanta Falcons secondary. But now with him back and Deion Jones, his defense is going to be back to what it used to be. Very solid. Uh, top, near top 10 unit. Um, top 11. I think they could be around 11th or 12th in the NFL. But a very solid defensive unit. And I think Keon O'Neal, man, he's going to, is he going to be that same player that he was before he suffered that ACL injury? That's to be decided, but I think he will go back to being a very solid safety. And will he be able to reach his potential now that he had that ACL injury? Because he was on the verge of becoming a very elite safety. So that remains to be seen. 
But let me know what you guys think about this video down in the comment section down below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more NFL videos and content. I upload NFL videos daily. So make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, make sure to hit the bell icons so you're alerted every time I upload. And thanks for watching.